Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com Now in the last video we looked at the basics of how a heat pump system works but in this video we're going to take a much deeper look and we're going to be looking at how the pressure, temperature, enthalpy and entropy changes throughout the system as the refrigerant passes around between the main components of the compressor, the condenser, the expansion valve and the evaporator now I know some of you watchers are engineers out there and you're really keen to get hold of some numbers so don't worry uh, we've got all the full numbers coming up as well. I just want to point out that the numbers shown in this video uh, may not represent the heat pump that you have in your buildings or that you're servicing etc. These are purely as an example just to help you understand what's happening throughout the system so you, you shouldn't compare your figures against this system Instead, you should check with the manufacturer uh, specifically for your heat pump uh, and ask them and compare it against their design data. All right, so let's jump in. So here we go. We've got the, uh, the two different heat pumps there in different modes. So we've got the heating mode and the cooling mode. And you can see, um, um, pay attention to the evaporator and the condenser. Notice how on the heating mode, uh, I've labeled it there as well, that the evaporator is on the outside. Uh, whereas the condenser is on the inside and in the cooling mode the condenser is on the outside and the evaporator is on the inside. This is very important for the operation of the heat pump. Now I've just put up a schematic representation of this circuit. Um, so in both circumstances the refrigerant is passing from the compressor. The compressor is there and it's passing around to the condenser. You see this one here. Got the condenser here and also the condenser here. Then the refrigerant is passing through over to the expansion valve. So after it's passed through the condenser and the heating mode, uh, it passes to here to the expansion valve. And on the cooling mode, after it leaves and goes through the condenser, it passes through up into the expansion valve there. Then you can see it comes around from the expansion valve to the evaporator. So the expansion valve and then through the evaporator. And on this side, through the expansion valve and through the evaporator. And then it goes, lastly, from the evaporator back to the compressor. So from the evaporator, back round to the compressor. Same on this one, from the evaporator, back round into the compressor. And if you drew this out um, to get its properties with a temperature enthalpy and uh, a pressure enthalpy chart, then this is the, uh, you know, a simplified version of that profile. So I've just marked out they're up on the screen um, so you can now see all the different points so uh, point one between the evaporator and the compressor you can also see that there on both the charts and then you can see the corresponding points on both the cooling mode and also the heating mode as obviously that point changes as the refrigerant is uh, changing flow in direction now the second point here which is between the compressor and the condenser again on the top right corner of the TS and pH charts and you can see on the heating mode uh, that's just there before the condenser and on the cooling mode that's also just before the condenser same as it says there point three which is on the top left of the, uh, the TS and pH charts and on the heating mode that is just here before the expansion valve uh, as well as here just before the expansion valve on the indoor uh, evaporator and lastly, point four, which is between the expansion valve and the evaporator. Uh, again, bottom left and on both the charts. And uh, point four here is just after the expansion valve and before the evaporator. Um, same on the cooling mode. So now we can see that uh, all the points, what the, uh, the stages are going to be of the refrigerant. So stage uh, point one, then the, the refrigerant will be a low pressure, low temperature, saturated vapor. Point two, we know the refrigerant is going to be a high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor. At point three, we know this is now going to be a high pressure, medium temperature, saturated liquid. And at point four, we know this is now going to be a low pressure, low temperature, liquid vapor mix. And that's going to make its way back to point one. So here we are, the goodies, the numbers. So uh, at point one, we'll start from here. So it's a low pressure, low temperature, saturated vapor. So we'll start off with a temperature here of about 2.5 degrees Celsius, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and uh, it's got a pressure of uh, 260 kilopascals at 2.6 bar. The entropy, you can see I've put the letters down here so you know what they all are. The entropy is 0.9 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin or 0.45 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. And the enthalpy is going to be 246 kilojoules per kilogram, 105 BTUs per pound. Now point two, we can see from the charts, we know it's going to increase in temperature. We know it's going to increase in pressure. There's also going to be um, some increase in enthalpy as well. So you can see here, there we go, we, well it's a compressor, so the pressure is going up as it compresses. So the pressure has raised to 1,600 kPa, 16 bar. Uh, that results in a temperature of 63 degrees Celsius, 149 degrees Fahrenheit. The uh, entropy is going to remain roughly the same, but the enthalpy will have increased as well. So that's now 282 kilojoules per kilogram or 121 BTUs per pound. Now at point three, uh, there's going to be some reduction in heat and also there's going to be a pressure drop because uh, obviously there's a lot of pipe work and bends in here. So there's going to be some resistance to the flow of refrigerant. So as the pressure drops, and uh, the, you can see there's going to be a, a drop in entropy and enthalpy. So uh, we've gone down from 63 to 56 um, degrees Celsius, 133 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure, you can see there's a small reduction in pressure there, 50 kPa, uh, down to just half a bar. Uh, the entropy uh, has also reduced, it's almost half, to 0.46 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Uh, 0.11 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit and then uh, the enthalpy has also dropped uh, from 282 to 134 kilojoules per kilogram uh, 57 BTUs per pound. Now at point 4 you can see there's been a big drop in both pressure and temperature and that's because of the expansion valve. Now you will notice, or hopefully you'll, you'll spotted, that uh, the entropy has actually increased slightly and that's because the gas has been expanded. Well, the, the li there was a liquid state there, and now it's a liquid vapor mix. So it's been expanded there. And when it expands, the entropy increases. But notice uh, there is no change in enthalpy, or there'll be very little. You can see that we'd expect that on the chart there as well. So that has now come down in temperature from 56 degrees Celsius down to. Uh, minus or negative uh, 1.23 Celsius, which is 29 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure has dropped back down to the this, this same pressure here, uh, well, close enough, so 280 kPa, uh, 2.8 bars. The entropy has gone down to uh, increase, sorry, to 0.55 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, uh, which is equivalent to 0.13 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit, and the enthalpy has remained the same at 134 kilojoules per kilogram, 57 BTUs per pound. So the refrigerant it will then make its way from point 4 back to point 1, passing through the evaporator, and there you can see there is some increase in temperature. There is uh, also a slightly a slight pressure drop, um, That's again because of the resistance to the, the flow. Now I've put these as a, a different pressure drop compared to the above. Um, that's just the way it is. It might, even if you have the same coils, it's not necessarily going to be exactly the same pressure drop in real life. In calculations, yes, but in real life, no. And then, uh, as you can see, both the entropy and enthalpy increase uh, back to their normal state, or just this at state one. So there we go. That is the technical overview of how a heat pump works. The numbers will be a bit different depending on if they are in heating or cooling mode and that's because you're obviously taking thermal energy either out of the building or in into the building so the obviously the energy is different in the airs you have there but this is just an overview of uh, how all these components work and what's happening in much in great detail amongst them so that is the end of this video thank you very much for watching i hope this has helped and hasn't confused you too much uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to check out our website. And once again, thank you very much for watching.